Hey everybody, this is Rido and we are back to Hearthstone. Third recording of the day and I'm just now starting to wake up at 6 in the evening. Uh, I need to play some Hunter cards before anything else and then we need to do some Battle Cry cards and try to at least get something done here. So let's hop into this and be as quick as possible. Which one would be Hunter? That would be Hunter. Play, play, play. Go, go, go. Am I really at rank 59 with the Hunter? Hmm. I haven't been paying attention to any of that. So, one of the things I've been considering as I'm trying to find or think of something to do to get more views to help me. I have seen with the super chat, which probably I could get and enable if I was live streaming. And with the fact that it does seem like people do go on that live tab and look at live videos and it doesn't seem like there's a ridiculous Rexa. amount Rexa. of live videos but it might also be the Rexa. case that Begin. live videos just off. don't actually make it to the trending tab ever maybe by design or just by the small number of people there but in what I'm seeing live streaming seems to be a better thing and yes, with Super Chat, people can donate money, and then that might be more money to, than I make in a month if somebody even donated $5. And yes, that might get me way more videos. But for my channel in particular, there has to be some kind of schedule to it. Uh, I can't, for instance, just right now at 6 o'clock on a Tuesday, uh, start streaming Hearthstone. If I do, it then distracts people from the videos I've scheduled and recorded, and then that effort is out the window, and the strict scheduling that I've been working towards uh, also gets gets demolished in the process. Uh, so the only days I could play Hearthstone would be on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. And that kind of makes sense as I'm thinking about this like if I could have seven quests and just play all day I end up playing almost all day anyways on uh, Hearthstone at, and if I could have seven quests overlapping then I imagine I could also uh, also spend complete quests more efficiently because almost certainly it a couple of quests would be the same quest where it's like get 25 battle cries or or get a certain number of victories and then mm -hmm. get a certain number of victories for the mage well those two quests are not exclusive uh, so both if I win with the mage is also just a general win uh, so that would kind of work Unfortunately, as it currently stands, the only way that's ever going to happen is if I could get quests to all line up and have seven quests on Saturday. And I think it would be Saturday, I don't think it would be Sunday, and I don't think it would be Saturday and Sunday. Although, Sunday probably would stay open as an option to do more. And it wouldn't be 30 minute recordings like I'm doing here. And it would be probably more talking with the chat and less, uh, less news, but not completely getting rid of news. It still wouldn't be face game. I still have no interest in that. And so that might very well lose me a lot of interest there. But the idea is there. And I guess it's plan B. But two things would have to happen first. First, I'd have to either stop caring about doing all the quests. Which means I stop caring about having gold. Which means I stop caring about card pack openings. And when all of those things work together in that fashion. Uh, then, you, then you see that... There's a lot of things I stop caring about. It puts Hearthstone in this very low level 
this this very low level of concern for me, which is kind of what I want, but it also lowers my chances of getting any more views, uh, new views. Uh, this guy's name is Pikachu. I was playing Clash of Clans, not something I stream, but just I play it every now and then. Well, I play it every day, actually, on my my phone as a break. Uh, when I'm taking breaks, and one of the person I was playing Clash of Clans named themselves the Legend 27, and and so I tweeted tweeted out that image screenshot of, well, I beat the Legend, which that whole commercial for Clash of Clans, which uh, no, it's not for it's the commercial is for Game of War, uh, which is a different style of game completely. Uh, I didn't even know what that commercial was until I saw it on YouTube as a commercial like months later. So I, people were talking about Alexa, The Legend 27 as a meme a little bit. It wasn't even a hugely big meme as far as I could tell. Uh, they, they were trying to make it a huge meme. But uh, uh, I didn't even know what they were talking about in, until now. And now I've I've tried to follow the meme uh, stupidly, but I thought it was kind of funny. Someone, you can name yourself in Clash of Clans and a lot of games the same names, which is weird because then you don't you don't actually know this person who this person is. What you have to do is you have to go to there's a recently seen. Thing. Hmm. Oh, if you oh, add no, last played Pikachu, and so that's what you have to do, and then if they friend you, you know their Battle.net account, which with the ha, which has the mm -hmm. the numbers, and after you know the after you know the numbers, then you can. Uh, well done. Then you can possibly report him, but there's there's actually no report button inside of Hearthstone at all. That well being said, uh, there's really nobody, to, n nothing they can do that's that annoying, anyways. Hmm. I don't know why he wants to say well played after that but okay just to be a jerk i suppose uh speaking of being a jerk hey hey i can actually do a transition i must be waking up uh ubisoft has banned 1500 for honor players for afk farming and sent out new warnings for another 4000 players and i guess I'm going to have to be the defender of AFK farmers a little bit more than I thought I would because the AFK away from keyboard is all that is and I assume they implied that people were using some kind of app to move their characters around so they don't get kicked from the game which I assume I happens in Full Honor by default uh, and it isn't something as simple as they put a rubber band around the controls to have them run in circles or something like that but even regardless of of the method Job's done. it's it seems seems ridiculous particularly for for honor to do this for ubisoft to do this in for honor to ban players when in all honesty it probably just means that their leveling system is not fair it's not a good leveling system if if an average player if in this case 1500 players well no let's just say the full number 5500 players have played for honor on the back of your massive amount of advertising and pushing this game that's not that good and then they played it and had an experience saying well if I'm gonna have any kind of fun out of this I've got to turn around and uh, 
AFK farm for more experience, then inherently it's just because you made a bad game. Uh, that's all this really comes down to is that they made a bad game. And it seems almost as if instead of trying to keep people playing the game, they've decided to go the exact opposite route and try and make people leave the game. Uh, well played. So, perhaps the idea is that they're just going to ban enough people to the point where they can say, well, nobody's playing it online and they can shut down the servers a few months earlier. Because that's really where, for honor, this brand new game is going to. Uh, when you look at something like The Division, where not a hugely active player base already, uh, The Division promised a couple bits of DLC for Season 2, but I don't feel like there's a lot of commitment there, and I feel like they are very much just going to... Uh, he played that wrong. He should, he should have attacked my other guy first. Then. So I'm gonna do this and this and we'll attack the face. Uh, yeah, I would not be surprised by this time next year. For honor, it, servers are shut down. And the game is pulled. Speaking of a game that's pulled, Dirt 3 is what I've been playing lately. Hey, I did another transition. And as I'm playing it, it's just a ridiculous amount of races. Now, looking at the complete edition that I'm playing, it turns out that you got more races with the complete edition. So there would have been uh, actually... Uh, really small amount of racetracks, a really small amount of cars, and a really small amount of races originally when you bought Dirt 3. So hopefully that game didn't come out at $60 in its original offering. Even in the complete collection version, that, by the way, Dirt 3 is not even available uh, for purchase uh, right now. Uh, it's been taken off Steam. It's, even at the complete condition, it's still not really worth $60 unless you're a super fan of rally cross racing and stunt driving because the game is about half stunt driving and half rally cross racing. And it, it mixes up the rally cross racing a little bit from being what they are depicting to me as true rally car cross racing to position racing which is more just like NASCAR racing uh, rally cross racing is more about times and so if you get the fastest time uh, between each section of a uh, of, of a race you'll you'll succeed and what's funny here is though, even though this is a 13-13, that's just protection because he can't attack. And if I silence him so he can attack, he'll go back to an 8-8. Hmm. However, in a second, if I can keep my characters alive, I can start inspiring them and powering them up even more. I have an axe to grab. And so I looked a little bit at what Dirt 4 is going to be, and it says it's going to have a bunch of, like, millions of tracks, but then it also says it's only going to have, like, four to six locations, I'm guesstimating there. Uh, and Dirt 3 had, like, no tutorialization, no explaining, didn't explain what Rallycross Racing really is at all. Uh, you have this co-pilot in Rallycross Races that's telling you to do things, and and you, I don't understand half the words that they're using even, and because I I'm just like, what is what does that mean? Uh, what am I supposed to do? 
uh, for a game, all the cars are manual cars, and yet the game is 100% automatic, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to finish Dirt 3, and that's probably going to be the only racing game I play in the next 12 months, which kind of sucks because I have some other racing games. I might play a Disney kids racing game that more like Mario Kart. I would be a fine with that, but I have Grid, I have Dirt Rally, I, I have Dirt Showdown, I think. Maybe I don't have Dirt Rally. Maybe that's not a game. Uh, but I'm not I'm not going to squeeze in the duration of one year all these racing cars I may do one or two racing games per year I'm not a super fan of cars not a super fan of racing but in general Dirt 3 looks really good but as soon as you take away that realism and that appearance it's missing so many options, so many things. You can't even do basic things like modify the way your car looks. Like, why can I not just paint or change the color of my car? Uh, uh, why can't I drive a uh, manual transmission? Why can't I control the whether I shift up or shift down? Uh, why can't I adjust the number of laps? Most of the races have way too many laps, and when you're playing on casual, it's so easy that you get in first place within the first two laps, and you'll go three to four more laps just in first place, far ahead of everybody else. And there's no, like, let the computer finish the race for me option. There's no, you're so far ahead, you win option you just gotta sit there for another four minutes driving the race with no challenge and no nothing interesting I will crush you. so i really wouldn't recommend playing i'm gonna go ahead and squish this guy since he's oops i played that wrong but um I wouldn't recommend people play Dirt 4 unless you own a force feedback steering wheel, you love racing, and you've played all the other racing games, because and you love rally car racing in particular, because I just don't think for its original price it's going to be worth it, unless it fixes a lot of things, and that's all Are kind of speculation. Uh, today is Pi Day, Oops, day 14 uh, March 14th, January, February, March, uh, and there's some sales slash non-sales going on in the video game world and elsewhere. I'm at level 52. I thought I was at 59. Oh well. We're almost done with one of the quests at least. I but they really do feel like non-sales. Maybe a few games are are going on that in in a similar way. I I if I really was gonna treat Pi Day as an actual holiday, uh, I might consider doing some special video or something. Rexa, I could probably find some Rexa. game that that has pies in it, or pizzas in it. But, Bring it on. Uh, no, no real sales. No Steam sales for sure. And uh, now that Steam in particular is not letting any Steam key activations count as a as a review, I wonder. You you have to have in the back of your head, is there some other way that they could slow down or stop Steam key purchases? Uh, will it eventually get down to the point where they just say? Uh, we don't allow Steam King activations at all. Would the Humble Bundle then turn into only in the Humble Store and only in good old games? And that's kind of the that's kind of the fear with the Humble Bundle already. Is even if Steam doesn't change anything, will will it start 
becoming more and more an issue of of the of games in the humble bundle not coming with steam keys uh, which then that's one revenue of games that's one avenue of games not revenue that that's totally the wrong word that's one avenue of games in which I use to to try to limit the amount of expense I spend per month while still adding to games and it adds some random games to it uh, particularly on this most recent Humble Bundle, it's been an issue of I didn't even know what I was getting because they uh, they were announcing the more games later, and so they finally announced more games, and I got three more games, and I didn't recognize any of them. Obviously, that that's the way it's gonna be. But honestly. If I end up getting seven or eight <laughs> games that would have been 99 cent games uh, in the Humble Bundle versus seven or eight uh, 99 cent games during a Steam sale, I'm doing better through the Humble Bundle just because that will cause... It, it will... The Humble Bundle is going to be a little bit more picky about what games they sell, so it's not going to be really Ready awful garbage games for 99 cents. And, and that that helps a little bit. Uh, and how I'm getting these games are worth about 99 cents, well, if I spend about $10 uh, each time, that's kind of where I'm getting the number from. Let's do this. Do this. Do this. And do I want to kill something else? No. Let's just try to get victories. Uh, But moving on, since I don't remember, apparently NAND flash drive shortages could drive up SSD prices by 10%. Now, my guesstimate here, and this is just a guess, is that the NAND flash shortages are coming from a potential new iPhone. Uh, because when they do make new iPhones, they do eat a lot of that stuff up. And I'm still here. And I'm running out of time. So, I kind of want to just hurry up and finish, so let's let's keep going at, at this. Uh, streaming and Super Chat, we already talked about. I am considering it, I just don't know how to do it with any of my games. I mean, I really don't know how it works. Uh, the Fallout 4 official high resolution pack was updated, so good for them, I suppose, for continuing to work on it. Uh, Rexa! Even though it's still not as good as uh, as the mods, they're making a Metal Gear Solid movie. Konami, of course, is gonna try to make as much money on that on that franchise as they're gonna try to do with everything. Uh, so no real big deal there. Starbreeze Studios is now publishing System Shock 2 after it already announced uh, it was publishing Psychonauts 2. And that's the fourth game that they've now become publishing. Starbreeze Studios, makers of Payday. I am guessing here they're not making games anymore. That they've found it is more financially viable to simply invest in other people and publish get publishing rights because of it which isn't a terrible thought not a terrible thought at all to say to to do that uh, payday didn't blow up the world and if they found if they found that they're just good as a video game publisher because they publish their own games that and they've got some money and they can get more return on investment on their own money it doesn't 
interest me or irritate me, I suppose might be the best word there. Too much to see that. To, to see one more publisher in the video game world. Uh, do you really need a publisher in the video game world? If they're doing things for you, I suppose that's true. If they're helping you, you and it seems like they're investing money and because they're investing money then uh, th that's helpful let's see I'm gonna do this, 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 and then this one. Uh, let's move on move on move on uh, the resist hashtag resist jam submissions came in powered by itch.io uh, they're mostly obnoxious submissions and and anti-Trump and anti-Republican submissions <laughs> uh, and frankly video games don't need to get political it, that's an, inherently what it what I feel is the problem with this is it's they're just getting political for a bad reason and they could have done any other game gym they they would have wanted to nobody uh, and not alienated half the people who in the United States who actually did vote for Trump uh, and these these game jams in general don't ever create any good uh, games get behind me it's like I said in general, but then I said don't ever, and and I I honestly think that the truth is they don't ever. That I I really don't believe that they do anything helpful. Let's see, let's hit this one. And then that. And, then that. Uh, and that's. It's just because the game jams are are kind of just get-togethers with people, programmers, and who are working on very simplistic games. Maybe it, it does push people to, to make their first video game, but honestly, I don't believe that you should make your first game at, video game at a game jam. I think you should be taking classes in school or online or reading books or in any way trying to do quality work I guess you could inherently make the argument that by by just doing it in jam fashion you c you're actually um, you're actually excusing and allowing them to do poor work and not put much time into it and return a bad product uh, so there's kind of a problem with game jams in general it's not like a jam session with a band and that that's what I suppose the idea is that you would work with other with new people and do all of that uh, but that it's it's really not the case Run away! I can see. Uh, because while you may talk to people, they're not gonna really look over your code. They're not gonna really help you. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not like a big group of people working together, so it's it's not as much of a collaborative effort as you would think. Oh man. And we've not really fixed it, have we? We've, we've still got some stuff to do, so we're going on to a fourth recording as I was trying to, to rate. I've got still some stuff to talk about, I guess, and at the end of the day, we've got more things to do. At the very least, I would like to do the battle cry cards, and we should finish that quickly, but playing hunter class cards, we, we're not very far far enough there and getting victories we didn't make any progress there yeah and 
Maybe I'll talk about the Resist Jam a little bit more next time, but probably not. Uh, ignoring the politics on it, I think it's just a stupid idea to go political. I think it's stupid that Itch.io did this. It's, uh, it's a blemish on their name in the long run as just a bad business decision. Uh, every single company in the United States right now that doesn't go political is going to benefit more than the people that do. I guarantee you it. Uh, and that was always the case, regardless of who's president or whatever. Don't go political if you're not a political business. If you're not a political political action committee and you're not asking for no donations for that reason, don't go political. Stay neutral. It's simple. Anywho, that's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.